The notion of the priesthood, which Jesus introduced in the New Testament, is not a repetition of the priesthood of the Old Testament. The priesthood of Jesus goes forward to a long distance from the Old Testament. It moves from the bloody sacrifice of male calves and goats' kids. Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice on the cross and perfects every sacrifice and effected perfect salvation to mankind. The Eucharist is a new notion of sacrifice and the renewal of the remembrance of the self-sacrifice of Jesus, the eternal priest. The disciples of God, the new group of priests, through this commemoration carry out this remembrance without break in the church. The call received is one of sacrifice, sacrificing themselves like Jesus to become sacrificial objects and to offer sacrifice. See John chapter 17 verse 19. The priestly duty of the priest today is to sanctify themselves and through that to sanctify the church and the world like Jesus. Those who enter this state of life should have the best qualities and convictions. See 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 24. Saint Paul even advises Timothy, do not ordain anyone hastily. Through the imposition of hands which Jesus gave to the apostles, the priest is ordained by the bishop. The Holy Bible says, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Mark chapter 9 verse 35 The authority of the modern priests who are being anointed by the Holy Spirit through the imposition of hands consists only in the fact that they are united to Jesus, the eternal priest. Let us take a brief look at religious life, or asceticism. Asceticism means perfect abandonment. In the ancient church, martyrdom was very common. With the conversion of Emperor Constantine in 312 AD, the persecution of Christians and the possibility for martyrdom decreased. There are several examples of saints who have founded or lived in religious communities, such as Francis of Assisi, Ignatius of Loyola, Clare, and Father Curiacos of Chavra. In the Malangara Church, Maravano started two religious orders, one for men, Bethany Ashram, and one for women, the Bethany Convent. Under Reverend Monsignor Joseph, the religious community of the Daughters of Mary was founded. Religious life is bound by the vows of obedience, chastity, and poverty. St. Francis of Assisi The father of St. Francis is Peter Bernard, who was one of the renowned silk traders of Assisi. Francis, who was born into a wealthy and noble family when he was living in worldly pleasures along with his friends, heard the divine voice. 
which is the best thing, to serve the Lord or his servants? And St. Francis answered, The Lord. After that, the life of Francis became a perfect dedication to his heavenly master, Francis, who grew up in the midst of abundance, gave back all his wealth to his father. Hereafter, I have only God as my father. Now I can call Father in heaven most sincerely. In saying this, he began to live as a mendicant. He had a lot of disciples, thus the order of the Franciscans took shape. Due to his humility, he did not receive the holy order of the priesthood. He received only up to the diaconate. Two years before his death, the five sacred wounds of Jesus were imprinted on the body of Francis. Being the personification of humility and poverty, Francis was also known as the second Christ. He died lying on the ground as a naked man in October of 1226. On July 15, 1556, he entered into heaven. Saint Ignatius of Loyola. He was born in Loyola, Spain, and had received the training from a high military officer from the royal palace of Ferdinand V. He was shot in the leg during the war and was hospitalized for a long period of time. During his stay in the hospital, he had the opportunity to learn and to meditate on the life history of Christ and the saints. He asked himself, if he and she can become saints, why can't I become a saint? It was this question that led him to the ascetic life of a monk. He first stayed in the Benedictine Hermitage and thereafter in a Dominican ashram. He lived in severe expiation and fasting. While he was staying in the Dominican Hermitage, he wrote the book Spiritual Exercises. He visited several holy places and taught for 11 years at various universities. Saint Alphonse. She is the first Indian saint proclaimed by Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI in 2008. She had a desire to offer her life to Jesus like little Teresa. But that would only have been possible if she broke the proposal brought forth by her family for marriage. She got into the heap of chaff, which was set on fire in the courtyard, and burnt herself. Only after 90 days were her wounds healed. And thus, through her entering into the fire, the decision of the householders was retracted, and she joined the St. Clair convent, where she received the name Alfonso. Although those who were in authority tried to dissuade her from entering into the convent on account of her poor health, her unyielding decision prevailed. Even through various illnesses, uneasiness and severe pains, she embraced them willingly and offered each suffering as a flower in the sacred wound of the heart of Jesus, and offered the same to God. I offer to the Lord a burnt sacrifice that is burning slowly. That is how she used to describe her sufferings. On July 28th, 1946, she passed away and entered into the heavenly abode. Servant of God, Marivanios. There is much that can be said about Marivanios, but here we will offer a quick snapshot. 
He was born on September 21st, 1882, and was one of the first priests to secure an M.A. degree, and became known as M.A. Achen. As the father of the reunion movement, there are no adequate words for us to highlight the importance of Maravanos to the Malangara Catholic Church. Maravanos was one who renounced everything worldly for his own convictions. Having abandoned the high occupation, the lofty state in life, the love and friendship of respected elders, the 400 acres of land which Bethany owned, he rejected all these and set out relying on God alone. Since he, who was the sole expectation of the whole Malangara church, having left his own community, and joined the Catholic Church. The persecution which he had to encounter from his kinsmen were very many. Although he did not become a martyr, the agonies he endured for the sake of truth and for the unity of the Church raised him to the row of the courageous martyrs. On July 15, 1953, he passed away. His tomb is in the Patam Cathedral as a center of solace and a sign of a miracle.